Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for My Wit Radio, brought to you by Women in Technology. Now here's your host, Tricia Stezzi. Hello, this is Patty Dismukes. I am board president for WIT, Women in Technology, and I'm your host for today. Uh, I'm so excited to have two of WIT board members here, uh, Tracy Garner, who is the WIT board chair and has had a long, successful uh, career at AT AT&T, as well as Tracy Ariel, who is a senior VP for Republic National Distribution Company, and she is also a board member. So today, we're really going to spend some time talking about um, really how we serve women in our community. Uh, As you know, um, WIT serves uh, women from the classroom to the boardroom, and we've created some incredible programs around um, girls, WIT WIT Girls, WIT Campus. We just started a new program, um, YoPro, for young women going and starting their professions, as well as career-enhancing programs. We also have got an incredible new program for single mothers uh, that Tracy Ariel is going to share a little information on. But before I get the conversation started with the uh, two Tracys, um, I want to remind everyone that we have our WIT Connect event Uh, on July the 23rd. Uh, If you have not heard about it, please go to our website, mywit.org, and check it out. This year, it's going to be different. It's going to be a virtual event, but it's going to be a a special evening. Uh, We're still going to do the things we're most proud of. We're going to be able to really share and highlight um, wit and what we do. We're going to be awarding scholarships. We're going to be um, having an executive auction. We will be auctioning off some incredible packages of executives in many companies. I think, I think we're up to 12 uh, packages. We have a silent auction with some incredible uh, packages uh, from trips to mentoring. Uh, it's just incredible. And then we have entertainment and uh, it, it's going to be a great evening. So please join us if you haven't already signed up. I think you'll be glad uh, you were there. Uh, obviously, in, in this time of COVID, we're having to be creative, uh, think differently, but it's still important that we uh, continue our mission, that we reach out to the people who support WIT and we continue to engage. So really encourage you um, to, to join us that night. Um, and it's a great event that you can and, and have your daughters and, and uh, uh, your husband and the whole family together to participate. So uh, I encourage you to, um, to really be able to, to join us and, and, and be part of it. So the two Tracys, these are two women that I just personally admire so much. They're just, uh, uh, you know, to have a board like we do. I think WIT has one of the best boards ever. Uh, we have just these brilliant women who have such great backgrounds and and have bring so much to the table. So I think we're going to continue to see great things with WIT just because of the incredible, talented women we have on the board and the incredible advisory council we have as well. So I want to start the conversation today um, and spend a little bit of time with um, Tracy Garner. Tracy just recently retired from AT&T. She had this incredible career, 30 years with one company, which is almost unheard of. Um, And so I want her to kind of share a little bit about her career, what it's been like to be uh, a woman in the technology field with such a a high tech company like AT&T. So Tracy, tell us a little bit about your background and, and, you know, how WIT's really been a partner to you throughout that. Sure, Patty. Um, And it's, it's a pleasure to be here today. You know, we are doing more and more things uh, remotely and through Zoom and all. And so um, I'm excited about the opportunity for us to experience WIT Connect together. And, you know, I think the cool thing about that is it's going to allow us to cast a broader net. So people that might not have traditionally been able to make it to the aquarium to experience WIT Connect can actually uh, dial in and uh, join the fun. So really excited about that. So, yeah, I wrapped up uh, last October a 36-plus year career with AT&T, started with Bell South, and obviously um, went through that merger acquisition in 2006 and spent the last uh, 13 years or so with with AT&T. And, you know, what I'd tell you is that 36 years was a combination of jobs in just about every kind of technology field you can imagine. And so... 
you know, starting in engineering, I went to planning, I did new product development and implementation, um, did technology development, you know, kind of dipped my toe in the IT arena and spent a lot of time in technology operations. And so I got to see um, what our company does really, you know, the entire food chain of it, if you will. And I think that was a big benefit, you know, to me in my career. When I think about those 36 years, as much as I enjoyed it and um, am grateful for the opportunity to have spent that much time with one company, I also recognize that in almost every one of those roles, I was absolutely in the minority. I was one of very few women in the organization. Probably the the organization that had the most women was my starting um, job in 1983 when I was an engineer. Um, and from there on, it just seemed like we, you know, kind of thinned out. And, you know, when I talk about being in the minority, I'm talking about um, organizations where maybe, you know, five, 10% were female. And so that presented um, obviously challenges, but, you know, I think some of those challenges are more myths than they are really challenges and it kind of gets in your head. And so, the longer I progressed through my career, the higher I got, I, you know, I realized I had an opportunity. Um, I really had a moral obligation, I think, to try to do something about that and give other women the same opportunities that that I had had. And so, you know, certainly the last 15, 20 years of my career, I just became passionate about driving that change in the organization, not just my immediate team, but in the broader um, organization as well. You know, one of the things I get to do as being their friend is I get to brag on them. Uh, So Tracy Garner, a couple of things I want to ask you about and and highlight is she was actually a a woman of the year for for WIT. And um, I think when uh, someone reaches that level and gets that kind of recognition, uh, it it, it says a lot about um, her peers, how they and the people who work for her that nominated her for this great award. And, and as a result of that, she's been a tireless uh, volunteer and, and supporter of WIT and does so much for the community. Uh, we're one of we're one board she's on. She's president of another board and gives so much back to the community and so very proud to to have her on our board and to be her friend. But one of the things I'd like to talk about, if you don't mind, is your legacy at AT and T. Your how, what, how many generations are you that of your family members that are AT and T? I think that's incredible. Yeah, so I was actually the third generation um, AT and T employee, and my family has worked uninterrupted um, in the company for 113 years. My brother's still there, and I always, you know, kid him because he's getting close to retirement as well. I'm like, you know, when you leave, you break that chain, and so no pressure, you know, but uh, you got something to live up to. But um, you know, that did make me certainly um, probably a more loyal employee, but it was something that I was super proud of. And, you know, I I thought every day that I went to work, you know, if my father was still here or my grandfather was still here, um, they wouldn't even recognize this company. They wouldn't recognize the world. And um, it's all good changes. But uh, to know that, you know, my grandfather starting 113 years ago, you know, helped kind of shepherd this company along. And then, you know, multiple generations of our family um, have been there every step of the way. Um, It's just a cool experience. And I think the fact that you're an engineer and you're the only female there with your family, I think it says a lot. So it says a lot about your, your father too, that they, you know, raised you to do that. So that's great. So, and thank you so much for all your service to WIT and to the community. We appreciate it. You know, WIT really gave me an opportunity to take what I was doing inside of AT&T and and trying to encourage more women, um, you know, to join the technology ranks. Um, But it gave me that opportunity to to spread that. And if you think about it, you can't really change the dynamics inside of a company if you're not also trying to change the pipeline that will ultimately get to that company. And so that's why I've been so passionate about, you know, participating with WIT, whether it's WIT Girls, WIT Campus, any of our programs, because that's our future. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're going to spend a few minutes um, talking with Tracy Ariel. Um, Tracy uh, works with Tracy and I and Penny Collins, uh, you know, really as we're trying to kick off this great new program called um, Single Mothers Program. So Tracy, will you give us a little highlight and overview of that program and the uniqueness of it? So, sure. 
Sure, absolutely. So uh, Women in Technology has uh, created what I think is just a really unique and uh, uh, program, and it's directed towards uh, really pairing cybersecurity certification with, with some of these disadvantaged single mothers um, who are pursuing education or pursuing, and they're trying to elevate themselves and their careers in the science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Uh, curriculum. Uh, this is just, you know, it's not just about giving them the certification and the education. It really is about giving them the support. Uh, so we had to think about, you know, how do we make sure that they have every opportunity to be successful? Because one of the hardest things as a single mom is balancing how much time and money can I realistically invest in my own future when I don't have any reassurances. I'm not totally sure whether or not I can be successful here and I've sacrificed this time with my child. And so I think this program is, um, it, it's uh, touching for me as having been a single mom and saying, man, this would have been really amazing. Um, but it's also about, you know, how do we kind of merge this technology gaps that we have? You know, what we heard Tracy just mentioned is that, you know, we need this pipeline and cybersecurity. There's a massive gap in, uh, in the jobs and available resources today. And why not help fill those with single moms who could use a step up? And this program is about giving them, you know, the child care that they uh, need so that they can focus on their, their certification program. It's about giving them uh, some of those extra techniques and practices of how to formulate into corporate America and uh, really kind of getting those mentor uh, relationships to make sure that they have someone to vet those things with to help make that transition easier for them uh, so that they can pursue uh, their future, you know, and their next their next step and their goals, I guess. Uh, so that was probably a little bit more than just a quick oversight. So, <laughs> So let's talk about, you know, unfortunately, we've had to po- you know push back the start of the program because of COVID. But um, tell, oh, it, tell the audience a little bit about the, the, the women, how many we have and who's going to go through our first program and how we've kept them engaged, uh, you know, up until the time the actual classroom starts. Sure. So there is um, over 20 women who are uh, in the program that have been selected. So they went through a pretty rigorous process of of an application process and an interviewing process and uh, have been selected to join this program. And as, as you mentioned, Patty, um, you know, with very heavy hearts, you know, of course, with everything going on with COVID, we did have to push the actual uh, classroom component. But, you know, there's other programs that, you know, the women are still engaged in, whether that be some of the WIT virtual pieces, whether that's with the Thrive her uh, kind of uh, programs as well to kind of continue to give them time management classes and uh, classes that they can take uh, virtually as well to continue their, their preparation, if you will, for when we are able to get them in the classroom. So one of the things I think I'm the most proud of is that we're uh, the women who uh, are part of this first class are underserved women. So they make $35,000 or less. Um, once they get this certification, which is difficult to get, it's a, it's a 12-week program uh, every Saturday from 8 to 5 o'clock. Um, they'll come out and they'll be able to get jobs that'll pay anywhere from fifty to $60,000, which that is life-changing for uh, a single mother to be able to do that. And we've got this incredible class and it's a labor of love. Actually, I I don't think I've ever been more proud of anything. Um, RNDC, the company that Tracy works for has uh, provided laptops for all of the women so that they actually can um, go through the courses that, you know, they, they didn't have laptops. AT&T was a huge, uh, from their foundation, supporter of this. And Tracy Garner played a big role in that. Uh, Sheltering Arms is going to provide daycare. Uh, we have uh, someone providing lunch and food for them every day. We have transportation provided for them. So it's been a real complete thinking around from start to finish, how do we help? And then Hunter Technical is going to to place these uh, the, the, the students, you know, once they complete the certification. So we really, it's not just take them through a class and give them a certification. We're going to help them be successful, which I think all of us are very proud of and, and very excited about. So, um, you know, I, I think I haven't been a single mom, but I 
I know how difficult it is just to be a mom. I can't imagine what it's like to be a single mom. So, you know, Tracy uh, Ariel's really helped guide us through this and and really talk help us understand the challenges of that. So we're very uh, excited about it and, and looking forward to it getting started very soon. So um, one of the things I think is, is, is exciting, too, is we want to get this first round going with um, security, but it's our intent to continue this. We, we want to do three to four of these classes a year. Of course, that's going to take money and we've got to go find foundation money. But we believe it really serves a need where companies have uh, a, a gaps uh, resource gaps, you know, we're going to help fill those. And these are entry level, but that's that's what's needed right now. So I think we've all brought our expertise to the table to say these are areas where we feel like you know, we can really help. So um, I'd like to get just some final thoughts from each of you on what you think and, and, and kind of to share a little bit about uh, WIT connect because that is something that's right here right now, the 23rd and what you hope we're going to be able to achieve by doing it virtually this year and, and what it means to you. I mean, Tracy, your company's come in and, and been a sponsor. Mine has Tracy Garner's a huge at and always there. So um, tell us a little bit about what you're hoping is going to happen on the 23rd. Tracy Garner. Yeah. Well, you know, as I mentioned earlier, um, one of the things I hope happens is we cast a broader net, you know, and we're able to share the wit story with so many more people that wouldn't have been able to physically be at the aquarium with us. But it'd be global. Yeah, it's global. It's gonna, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it can literally be global. I mean, we can be all around the world, um, you know, talking to Penny about the format and the technology that we're using to make this happen, I think is really exciting. And, you know, looking at a lot of other nonprofits, that have had to go virtual for big events during this pandemic. Um, I, you know, I, I personally think we've got one of the best setups um, that I've seen thus far. And so I think it's going to be a fun time for people. Um, it's very cost effective uh, for them to join us that evening. Um, I kind of have my eye on a couple of those auction items. And so I'm not going to tell um, Patty what they are because she'll just be able to drive the price up. Um, you know, but in addition to the executive auction, we, like you said, we've got some great um, trips, places that you actually can go and still, you know, semi isolate yourself. Um, we've got wine tastings. We've just got all kind of experiences that I think people are going to be excited about. And so I'm just looking forward to being able to share the wit story, the excitement of those scholarship winners that night, um, you know, with a with a global audience. It, and certainly I would echo uh, everything that, uh, you know, the other Tracy, we like to say the Tracy's are usually in line here. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think one is it's a unique format. And I think it's going to be really exciting to see how we're able to turn what, you know, has been a very well orchestrated kind of in, you know, face to face program into a virtual program uh, that does offer uh, something for everyone. If it's your first time coming, uh, you'll be able to see the power of what these scholarships mean for these women, for these recipients, for these girls to be able to pursue college with uh, a little less stress of, you know, how am I going to make it and how long am I going to make it for? I maybe have to think about taking a break because maybe I won't have the funding I need. Maybe I won't be able to take it. So I think being supported and having that, the energy of all of these men and women who are there and who are cheering them on, Gosh, that's amazing. And, and so I think everyone being able to experience that and a broader audience being able to experience that, uh, I, I'm, I'm super hopeful that that's going to be magical for everyone else, too, that, that's there. So I think that's one side. I think, you know, uh, you know my organization, RNDC, we're one of many companies doing the executive auction in, in a unique format, right? So we'll see how this goes as well. But the idea is that for those other businesses who are looking during these COVID times to say, well, how do we do you know, introductions and relationships when we can't actually get in the door. This is one way and, and the funds go towards a good cause. And, you know, it's not like you won't be able to see where the money goes because you'll get to see the, you know, those girls and women who are getting those, those scholarships. So I think it's just um, all around should be a really phenomenal event. And uh, if you don't already have your ticket, certainly encourage you to get out there, uh, purchase a ticket and come check it out. Yes. And it's very reasonable. It's $50 for a, a, a ticket. If you want to go to the VIP reception, it's $175. 
It's very, very reasonable, and it's a great evening. It's a great event. I want to thank both of you so much for joining me today. I want to thank uh, uh, the radio station for having us on today and allowing us to continue to share our message about WIT. So thank you so much. We're looking forward to WIT Connect, and uh, we'll see everyone on Zoom then. Thank you. Thank you.